Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner, for your gracious remarks. And ladies and gentlemen, I can only start by saying you looking at one very proud individual, the son of Gladys Russell, my stepfather Percy, could you stand as I call these names? My five children, Wendy, Precious, Don, Willie Jr., Kelly. They doused me with champagne last night. Thank you. Thank you. Turn around. Yeah. Also the proud brother of Sandra Scarrier, uh, my nephew, Clay V, and her husband, Clay. I don't think anyone can accurately describe the feeling that I'm feeling here today. It is such a great feeling, a very special feeling for me particularly as I, I look around and I see so many people who have inspired me, who've pushed me, more importantly, who's trusted me. And I think this is one of the things that baseball has afforded me the opportunity to, to rub shoulders with so many fine people. That has always been my bottom line. I'm eternally grateful for these types of people in my life. This ball player here did not get to Cooperstown without a network of family, very special friends, coaches, managers, teachers, you name it. So I accept this award, which is the greatest award that's bestowed upon anyone who has ever played this game. And I also accept this award for the, for the Peter, people at the stadiums the clubhouse guys, the bat boys, the ground crews, the announcers, the media, people like the baseball writers of America who so graciously allowed me to be here in the Hall of Greatness for this tremendous award, and also the media who has been tremendously fair with me throughout my career. That is very special to me as well. Coming out of Oakland, California, and Alameda, California, little, little did I know that once given the opportunity to do something that I had dreamed of for many years of putting on a uniform, something unique happened after spending four years in the minor leagues, honing my skills so that I could get to the big leagues and and perform such as so many of these great men behind me who has made such a tremendous impact on the game. The word honor, you know when I think about the word honor, I think about men had great honor on the battleground in wars. The corporate people in the boardrooms the politicians in back rooms. But I have to say my greatest honor was the moment that I arrived in Pittsburgh and put in what I thought was the most grandest exhibition of how a city can open its arms to any one individual. I came in through the Fort Pitt tunnels and it was the uh, most beautiful thing that I'd ever observed. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh didn't know an awful lot about me, but I certainly knew an awful lot about Pittsburgh. I knew there was a tradition, a very proud tradition. It wasn't a fancy place because the people are real. 
If you went out and did what was expected of you, you can win the admiration of that city. And then all it is is hard work, doing what you had to do, and helping a fellow man. I learned an awful lot in Pittsburgh. I learned some things that probably no learning institution that I could have attended, that I could have learned anywhere else but the city of Pittsburgh. I have to thank a lot of people, particularly the late John Galbraith and his family, because what they did, they assembled some very unique people in the front office, and they put some outstanding guys in the clubhouse. I learned an awful lot from a lot of my teammates, whom I'm very honored and, and grateful for that experience, one I'll never forget. But I'd like to point out one particular teammate of mine. He kind of shined a little brighter than most and stood a little taller than most men. He had the ability to play the game as though his entire life depended on every ball game. He passed that atmosphere of playing. But more importantly, he taught me the importance of, of being a man, to be able to command respect rather than demand it. I'm talking about a gentleman who has a very special place in my heart and always will Roberto Clemente. Which makes it, what makes it such a, a real honor to be here because now I, alongside of Roberto and some of the other distinguished pirates that have displayed their skills and, and was accepted into this Hall of Greatness, it does leave me with a, a very good feeling. You know, as I talk about my teammates, we didn't have probably the greatest at all times, and Chuck Tanner can tell you that because here was a man, and I had two very special managers, Danny Murtaugh, who I see his lovely family is represented here, and Chuck Tanner. I learned an awful lot from both of these men. Not to say that the other managers that I played for was not equally important, but it was just something very special about both of them. One would sit back and tell the Irish tales and chew his tobacco and spit tobacco juice on your shoes. Chuck would be the type of individual who smoked cigars and stood right in front of your face. And you know he was smoking cigars. But nevertheless, these were truly committed baseball men that has helped me an awful lot. That was very special in so many ways, and I can never, ever forget that. And that's going to help me as I climb the ladder of management, as I certainly want to do in this particular game. It's very special to me. It's very special to me in a lot of ways to learn about winning, <clears throat> to know exactly what it takes in order to win, the formula for winning. I've said it many times to a lot of good people, and I'm sure these gentlemen up here behind me will echo the exact things. A winner expects to win in advance, long before it happened. A winner has seen it, <clears throat> had the vision, and settles for nothing less. These are the things that these managers, my teammates, the city of Pittsburgh has afforded me. That's why I say I am extremely proud. I have friends that I can look out and think of that means an awful lot to me. And I wish I could single them out, and I'm sure each and every one of you know that I am thinking about you and I certainly care. This is to the young people. I am living proof that hard work earns just rewards. There's just no shortcuts. There are no substitutions. The thing that I can pass on to you today is when you feel good about something, when you genuinely know that you care about a profession, and in my case it was baseball, in my heart, I knew I wanted to play baseball, and my mom would be the first to tell you. She probably thought something was wrong with her son when 
Uh, I used to tell her that all I wanted to do was play baseball, and she knew that uh, uh, playing baseball was fine, but the percentages of anybody getting to the big leagues were far-fetched, and the numbers were very small. But the important thing was, given the opportunity, once it happened, to try and do your job so well that the next person coming behind you, excuse the expression, will catch purely hell. And I think that's what commitment, love, and desire means to all of us. To get something that means an awful lot, that's going to allow you to share in the communities, to get there and show how you care about the things that you're fortunate enough to do and there's other people who are less fortunate. Giving. And the kinds of things that had just flabbergasted me to no end. All I ever wanted to do, once I got to Pittsburgh and put on that pirate uniform and, and wore it very proudly, all I wanted to do was to win and represent the city. And in these two rings that I was fortunate enough to get, which we refer to as <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears, that means an awful lot, folks. And again, it all boils down to the people that we come in contact with. I look out and I see people like Joe Brown, the, the gentleman that signed me, Bob Zook. These guys know what they have meant to me. My attorney and very good friend, the Litmans. There's just a host of folks. And as I stand here today and I cherish this very moment, and I see so many people, the only thing I can say to each and every one of you is grab it, hold on to it, cherish it, feel good about yourself, because these are the very things that we say to each other to say, I've done exactly what I wanted to do with my life. And do you know they had nerve enough to pay me for doing that? <laughs> In closing, I'd like to make a couple of remarks about where I am with my life today. I just was with a, another outstanding organization, the Atlanta Braves, whom I'm no longer with now, and, and I think they're in, headed in the right direction. But I'd like to say in closing that no matter what I've done, on or off the field, all these glorious moments that have been bestowed upon me, I could not have done it without getting on my knees, humbling myself, and giving thanks to God and asking for strength and courage and thanking him for providing me with the talents to go out and weather the storm. And then as, as I look back, it's almost like all the peaks and valleys that I've had to deal with. It was God putting me through a test to say, I'm going to find out how truly you want to play this game. I'm going to put you through some tests, some tests that's going to hurt, some tests are going to question your your real integrity, I'm going to put you through the test. And if, after every obstacle that I've had to deal with, when the smoke cleared, there was still only one thing that I've ever wanted to do, and that's play baseball. So God saw forth to say, well, since this individual has displayed some of those things that are very unique in the individual, there is a true love for the game that he exhibits. And that's why I'm here today to say I'm only too happy to accept this award for every one of us, particularly my family. And I'm just going to take this and say, baseball, I want to give something back to you because you've given me an awful lot. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and it is an honor. Thank you.